It's raining today. We're stuck inside. Uh, I, you got stuck in the rain really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the grocery store. And he was about to pedal back to Jake's house. And I look outside and it's just like... Damn. And Rob's like... Do you really? I'll do it anytime soon. Dude. <laughs> and then I ran back to Stu's house and got the van and he already got picked up. So, But yeah, I'm surprised it's actually raining today. Springtime. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I don't know, weather's on and off. That was literally the most, like, I, I, I was literally surprised. I was like, I thought it'd be already hot by the time I got down here. It was yeah. pretty nice right now. I don't know, the weather's been fluctuating kind of crazy these last few years here in Austin. I mean, it's hit or miss. It's different every year, this time of year. I mean, you never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes it's raining a lot, and sometimes it's com a complete drought so we already hit 90 like a few times in portland already for the wow. year so yeah but we got a lot of rain and snow this winter but then it's like just jumped like boom it's like hot you know it's like rain. and uh, yeah i think it, like yesterday it was like 90 and i'm like fuck you know i'm like i need an air conditioner for my house like it's getting too hot like in the summer now just to, like have fans on you just melt so I think this summer will be good here because obviously we we have been getting a lot of rain, so all the creeks will be going like the the green belt where everybody swims here in Austin is going probably the best that it has in ten years, and yeah, I don't know, it'll be going through the summertime. I'm gonna try. So go, I'm gonna go swimming tomorrow before I take Stu's truck van back. It'll be nice. To, <laughs> it'll be nice to not just have to go to Barton Springs. You can have you know, 10 to 15 other spots for choices, you know, that are usually dried up. What's that uh, big one? What's that one? I always want to go to that one. It's like a U thing and kind of looks like it's like a waterfall that goes into it. It's like a big pond. I don't know. Do you know which one I'm talking about or do I just sound crazy? There's weird, you know, there's weird names for every spot on the green belt. You know, there's Twin Falls and there's Sculpture Falls. Oh. And there's all, there's names for all sorts of little waterfalls. I think I always just see it on Brian Hunt's Instagram. He's always swimming. Oh, there. he he's yeah. He knows about a lot of good stuff. Um, he he goes down to San Marcos a lot. That's probably what you're thinking. Of. Okay, I always see that one. I'm like, oh, that one looks dope. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's probably one in San Marcos. Um, but yeah, you. I mean, you've lived in Austin like your whole life, right? I mean, you're like born yep. and raised, right? Yep, I'm from here. Um, you 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 started racing like pretty young. Or did you just kind of ride BMX, or were you, were you more of a racer? My <clears throat> my dad got me my first BMX bike. It was a uh, it was an old Monview Moto Mag that he got from a bike shop here in town. It was it's I mean it's been closed for twenty plus years, but it was called Abajam. <laughs> I've always thought that that name was pretty sick for a bike shop, but we picked this old like. I mean, it was, I'm pretty sure it was from the 70s. Maybe. The Moto Mag would be like yeah, 70, 79 70s. to 83, maybe? Yeah, obviously it was before my era, but, um, you know, this was on my seventh birthday, so he got me this, um, it was a Mongoose Moto Mag, it was red, I remember it had blue tires on it, and it had silver mags, and... It weighed, I mean, it it weighed close to, I mean, as much as I did, probably. It probably was I like mean, a 40-pound bike, you know? Yeah, and I was seven. Yeah. And I was little. I mean, yeah. small. Real little kid. So, um... The only thing was, it had going for it is, like, it probably had a 17-inch top, too. That was my introduction. And the first the first day he gave it to me, um, he took me to 9th Street. That was, like, that was the first place I ever went to. How, how what year, and, like, was that... So that would have been, um, Ninth Street's been going for a while. 94, I Okay. Guess. Yeah. Um, so summer of 94. It's the summer I graduated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. let's stop. Okay, so summer of 94, um, that was, a you know, that was my introduction to it. Uh, went to Ninth Street and... I think within the first week or two of me going there, we had found out about the racetrack that was up north, Capital City BMX, mm -hmm. and that was just, that was my next step. That was the, kind of the next place that we went to. Yeah. Um, from 9th Street. And you raced the Moto Mag? I raced the Moto Mag, but oh. obviously, <laughs> like, learned pretty quick that, 
the Moto Mag was not a race bike for me, and there was better options. Oh, I'm sure you, yeah, so, I'm, I'm sure your dad was like looking around at like all the minis and was like, for sure. But I went, you know, I had some crazy bikes growing up, but uh, man, we got rid of every single one of them. I wish we had kept even just one of them, one of those, especially that Moto Mag. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's kind of a tradition I've kept to this day. It's like I don't, I don't have any of my old bikes. I've, I've given them all away, all my old parts, all that stuff. You know, it all ends up either getting broken or recycled and given to other people. So, yeah. Um, you might want to keep one. Shit, dude! I wish I had one of the, those old ones. That's what when, yeah. I, when I did this when I did a podcast with Volker, he was like, you know, he was like, I, I just get kids buy bike because they need a bike to ride or i just give it to a homie and he's like i wish i'd at least like kept two just, you know I was in the same boat man. and there because it's true there's always someone that needs oh it. yeah and you know you, you feel weird having something that you know somebody else could be using oh definitely you know you'll never use yeah yeah and i don't know I've got enough shit in my garage. That's true. Well, you, yeah, I don't even need to talk about having too many bikes because <laughs> it's bad. Um, but yeah, you you just started racing for a while. Did did you kind of do the circuit, like go, go to different races, go to nationals? Or I was serious into it, man. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, you know, I I always uh, I always rode trails the whole time I raced. So I raced from when I was seven till I was like. I don't know, 14 or 15. Okay. And really that whole time, I kind of stayed riding 9th Street, but was obviously racing nonstop as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was definitely a period of a couple years where I took it serious and I traveled, I tried to, you know, go to as many nationals as I could. But, you know, back then it was, <clears throat> you know, very few people had a factory ride or someone yeah. that was, you know, paying your way or really helping you out at all, you know. And I had a little shop sponsor and you know, they would they would help pay for hotel rooms and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, the reality of it was, you know, my parents could only take so much off the time of what they were doing to yeah commit to you know traveling all around and driving to these races and paying for entry fees in these hotels and you know it's a very very dedicated part of bmx you know oh it definitely is more than the freestyle aspect of it because it's so much more family orientated yeah i don't it's like everyone's involved it's not just the rider you know it's it's a it's a team effort you know Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I had a few friends growing up that raced that, like, one of my buddies raced for, like, Haro Krupi and stuff. And Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was like him and his mom were, they were gone. Like Once you get to that level, it's, you know, if you're not doing what it takes to stay with the best of them, then you're just kind of wasting. You're just going to get smoked. Yeah, there's yeah. no reason to, to even be doing it, really, unless you're, I don't know. Just going to the local track exactly. and having fun. But exactly. you're going to be hitting, yeah cruising around then it, you know it, i mean it and that's the reality of it you know i would show up to these nationals and i wouldn't be ready and not only that i was i would was small i was yeah. little man i was you know 13 14 and i was racing these kids that were literally twice the size of me like weight and height like and i could get them in certain areas you know i had skills in the rhythm and i could jump shit that they couldn't and stuff but when it came to size and power I was just getting smoked, man. Were you? Did you start off clips? I mean, that right around what ninety six, ninety seven, people really started clipping in. Yeah, it's, and that was the era. Like I'd say, like because I feel like once that hit, yeah. I remember like some of my friends that raced. And they got sixteen, and, and they were like, "We have to hit the gym now." And he's, you know, where they just like, "I'm going to ride trails yeah. because I don't want to go to the gym because it was getting to be so power driven instead of not like these guys don't have skills, but it's like." I remember waking up and doing sprints before I went to school when I was like 12 <laughs> years old, you know, like, and it's still dark out. And you, like, that's a real moment. You're just like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, this is weird, you yeah. know? Like, I don't know. No, it I definitely got to a point to where I was like, you know, I don't mind taking it serious, but I don't want to take it this serious. Yeah. This is, this is weird. It you know, seemed, and it seemed like that's that, that, at that age it was. It, yeah, it, it, like I did not enjoy that part of it. I enjoyed riding and all of that, but 
when it came down to, and I, and I understood that aspect of it because, you know, obviously your family's committed to it and they're the ones paying your way. So they want to see you do good as well. And yeah, I mean, you got to put it up, you got to put everything into it, you know? Oh yeah. Racing is, I mean, it's, it's real deal. Re- it's real deal. It's real deal. Um, I think the first time I ever saw anything of you, correct me if I'm wrong. I remember, I think it was a photo and dig. Specialized little mini specialized fat boy or something clipped in doing like a little like moto whip or something. So at that time, I let me all right. So first off, I think Chris Holman shot that photo, yeah. And that was actually an old power light frame with specialized stickers on it. Oh, so it was a little you know, <laughs> okay. Uh, undercover thing yeah okay. power light did have the little single tube it, was, it wasn't like i was sponsored by specialized or anything but i think a buddy of mine that i i used used to race on the same shop team as me had gone had moved to california and started working for specialized yeah so he sent me um i think i don't know it was some old like specialized trail bike or something and it didn't fit me or anything. Yeah. So I had ended up just like taking the stickers off of it and putting it on like a power light that I liked. Yeah. And just, just to make, know. just be like, thank you. Yep. You know, you know, it's, you know, really the only time I've ever done that, but I was, you know, shit, I was 13 or 14 oh, yeah. and it wasn't like I was really sponsored by him anyways, but you get stickers when you're that age from somebody exactly, and you're like, Walking around for two days, like, what's up? I got yeah. some stickers. But, um, yeah, I think that photo was from Five Hip. And... Oh, it was Five Hip? Wait, maybe? No, it was 9th Street. Was it 9th Street? Okay. I'm getting my photos mixed up. Because I think I had, like, a couple photos printed right around that same time. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, all mm-hmm. of my first stuff. Yeah. Growing up, like, so, you, I mean, you go to 9th Street a bunch to ride. And that was kind of, like, right when... I mean, Austin, you always had the homeless dudes, but it seemed like just right after that when 9th Street kind of maybe was blowing up. Did you, do you reckon, do you remember some of like the pros and dudes riding there that, you know, like Taj or any, you know, like Ron Kimler, any of those dudes from back then? I do for sure. But at the time, um, I mean, videos, videos and stuff were like so scarce and I, I didn't really have my hands on too many of them yet. Yeah. That... I didn't really know who anybody was. They were just you know? older dudes. But they that were riding. around. They were around. You know, they were there. Yeah. Um, what about when uh, Road Fools One came through? See, that was definitely like a tipping point for sure. I mean, like that was kind of when I feel like everyone found out about it, and that was yeah. like when you started to see, you know, all the people from England and you know all over Europe and you know East Coast, West Coast. I mean, that was like it was like the hub opened. You yeah. Know, after. Those that was like 98 ones. or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was younger, <clears throat> I broke up with this chick, and I was like, you know, where you're like, I was like 18. I'm like, so I'm, like I'm loading up my, my GMC Jimmy, and I'm just going to drive to Austin. I'm just going to drive nights. It was like a little bit before then, but I remember I think I saw some footage and you know, like old poor boy video or something. I'm like, I'm just going to park at 9th Street and just live there and figure out a job. I was literally about to, and then me and like the chick made it up and stuff. People still think that they can get away. People still have that mentality. I feel there's, like you, there's still people yeah. sitting in places that are saying the same thing. No, it, I feel like it was more realistic maybe back then than it would have been yeah. nowadays because Austin yeah. was, you know, small. You actually parked in front of 9th Street. Probably park overnight then. Yeah, except so, for now, yeah, yeah, you now, have to now pay it's for a lot it. Different. Yeah, you'd be paying yeah. overnight. Paying hourly. You'd be paying that Monday to Friday if you. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, so you just rode 9th Street, and wh- when did you start feeling like, you know, you were getting old enough to where, you know, you started feeling like you were starting to become part of that 9th Street scene, or just, you felt like there was an actual grouping of riders in Austin that you were maybe starting to become part of, you know? For sure. Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I guess I kind of always felt... A little bit part of this scene, yeah. you know. I don't know. I just don't I was, know if, like, when you were younger. Way, well, I mean, also at that time, I, I mean, I was the only kid going down there. And yeah. I was really the only kid that could kind of ride the place, you know, and kind of jump everything that everyone else could. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, it wasn't like I was friends and hung out with everybody that went down there, but you know, 
uh, they treated me with respect and, you know, I did the same. Yeah. And it was, it was, I don't know, it was good. You know, I kind of had that kind of big brother mentality. Yeah, in our, and you know, kids like, need that coming up riding, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I feel yeah. like there's so many bike riders nowadays. A lot of kids do miss out on that, like, kind of older brother kind of, Dude looking out for you at the skate park or for trails sure. or even like in the streets. And I learned my lesson a few times, man. I, you know, I used to ride the place backwards and I, you know, got ran into a few times and just God. like, you know, you know, I was a kid. I did stupid shit and like, uh, yeah, I mean, I learned my lessons a few yeah. times. So, I mean, I thought, yeah, that's a, that's a plus as well. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to jump into... That, that that first Empire road trip you went on with, like, Bruce and, like... That wasn't an Empire trip. It wasn't an Empire trip? That was, a, that was just a prop trip. I always thought that was an Empire Florida. trip. No, it was, like, Bruce and, like, Neil and a few people and Joel. Oh, okay. That trip. Okay. Um, but before that, like, did you have a relation? You have a relationship with Tom and Tina just from being younger, like going in there and shopping at Trend and stuff back in the day? Yeah, well, um... I mean, Trend was really the first BMX shop in Austin. Yeah. So it was where, you know, this is where everyone went. It was where I went. So, I mean, I've, I've had a relationship with Tina and Tom since, you know, really the beginning of me riding the bike. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, when Trend turned into Empire, um, you know, a lot of people, basically everybody went with them. Yeah, yeah, no. Me, me including, you know. Um, so, yeah. Was uh, that was was that trip, though? Was that a trend trip or was that Empire? I know it was. That like, was an Empire trip. Was it like right at the beginning of Empire? Yeah. Okay. Because I remember. Yeah, yeah I remember. It's uh, the same one I'm thinking of. It's like, I think he was like, I mean, you were pretty young. Um, I just remember Bruce was on it. Yeah, I feel like that was like a Southwest one, trip. Or yeah, yeah. Was that one first? Well, well, that well, was that was just a trip that Stu put together. Yeah, yeah but I'm saying, was that, was, the, wasn't that, was that trip before? Yeah, that one was... That was, like, the first trip you ever... Probably, like, the first, like, yeah. legit road trip you went on, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the first time I remember Because really Joel, Joel was supposed to go on it, and he had gotten hurt, and... I don't know. I, I had met up with all of them at the skate park one night, and Stu had asked me if it was a possibility if I could go. And I remember just, like, going back to my parents' house and... Bagging them and yeah, how old are you? Fourteen? I think I was sixteen. 13? Oh, sixteen. Okay. Yeah, which was pretty sketchy at that time. Like, I mean, Stu had to vouch for me to take me to Florida from Austin. You know, as a sixteen-year-old, and I don't know. It's weird when you look back at yourself as sixteen because when you're sixteen, you're like, you know, you think you're like, no, I I know exactly what's going on with it. You, you know, you feel really confident about what you're doing with yourself, and then you look back. I didn't then. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I mean, kinda... I kind of, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't. I was, I mean, it all happened so fast. Like, I was excited I was going, um, but I didn't really know how to handle it, you know? Like, it was really my first big trip, you know, really with anybody. Yeah. Let alone a bunch of riders that I looked up to. Yeah. You know? Who were so, the riders on the trip? It was, well, George D was on it. Um, That's the one with Bruce. George D was on that one, too. I swear. Bruce was on it. So um, you, got I, I, you know, sometimes that stuff gets mixed up. You're like you're mixing up two things in your head, you know? Yeah. Uh, Walter was on it. Um, oh, he knocked his teeth out. He knocked his teeth out. <laughs> yeah. That was a fucking gnarly experience. Uh, that that seems who like... Who else was on it? Um, Joel? Joel. Uh, no, Joel was not on it. I took his place. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, AJ Camp was on it. Um, mm -hmm. Damn, I'm having a brain fart. Whatever. Huh? Yeah, I mean, there's there's some. Yeah, sounds, jo sounds was cool. Joe Simon on it? No. Okay. It sounds pretty, pretty close. We got a good, we got yeah, a good, we got, good, a, good, we got yeah. a good mix. You can cover everybody. How was it like? You know, there was that that probably was the first time you were like actually going out filming, trying to get clips and like yeah, work sure. on something. So I mean, yeah, that was definitely the first time I had ever really been in front of a camera. So I don't know. I kind of didn't really know what to do. So. I kind of just did what I knew how to do everywhere we went, yeah. you know? Um, I don't know, definitely very, like, young and eager for sure, and probably rode the most, and, 
you know, slept the least on like the whole trip just because I was just so excited. Yeah. Know, probably, I don't know. They probably got annoyed with me, but I, I can't see. I don't bruise it. You know, like I remember, did. I bought these. I remember, I, I didn't take like much many clothes on the trip, and like the first place we went to was a skate park called Dex in Houston, and I bought these three shirts, and I remember. They were, they were all white, and I came back home, and they were, like, all three of them were, like, black. <laughs> just because I had just worn those three shirts the entire trip, and probably didn't do laundry or take No, no, there's no reason just, to. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did you know who, like, Bruce or George or any of those dudes were going into that trip? Vaguely. Vaguely? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I feel like that was kind of... I mean, they were... I, mean I guess I did for sure, because Bruce had won X Games by yeah, then, yeah. right? It was around that time. Yeah, I think he time. just won. So, yeah, yeah I definitely like knew. Yeah, yeah. I, knew, I, I, I knew who these guys were. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And then, I mean, I feel like literally right after that, kind of, it feels like stuff just started, you know, yeah. BMX was just, you know, started yeah, rolling no, for you. Not long after that, I mean. Um, who were you riding for then at that point? Well, I guess um, I was already getting flow from Robbie from Fit. From Fit? Um, Fit was still. But only three years old or something around there. Less, yeah. Yeah, less? Even. Was it less? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was. Uh, you were on Man Made then, too, at that point? Or no? Yeah. Right after. Yeah, I was on Man Made. Um, I would think I was getting flow from Vans. Um, yeah, that's about it. Was the Man Made. I mean, you guys just jogged my memory with the man made stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like, was that. <laughs> You're bringing up all this old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> was the man made yeah, video your first, like. I forgot about all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, was that your first video part? Was the man made video? Um. Was it? Or was it Jersey Riding? No, I never even. Probably. Or was it Jersey like Riding? A, was like. Well, yeah, you gotta. Or or was no, it wait. like in a shine or. Something. I feel like Shine was after. Well, okay. Well, my first actual clip in a video was I remember this because I yeah. was riding a, a fucking sixteen inch, and it was in an old ride video called Generation. Yep, yep. And I think <clears throat> they call me Shrimp in it. I I do remember that. I me- yeah. And it was at the it was at the first skate park I ever you know first skate park I started riding at, so. Yeah, I mean, I was, I think I was 14 then. Um, but first video part, I, want, I don't know, man. I want to say Jersey riding. Yeah. Yeah, because you were, were you, you were kind of taking trips up to the, the East Coast in the summers right around then, weren't you? Yeah, because I had made friends with uh, Chase Dehart pretty early on. Yeah. And, and you would, guys are really close. You guys are about the same age, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, I would, I, he would come down and stay with me and i would go up and stay with him and we'd like stay at each other's parents house yeah and just travel around and ride we did that for years honestly so um but even before that i met um like mike poro and like tom white and those dudes from traveling to austin when they were super young they would like come and stay with me when i still lived with my mom um at the house that I had a mini ramp down south. And uh, so, I mean, I met Tom and those dudes when they were like, I don't know. I can't even picture Tom White as like a young kid. They were. Because I've never even know, seen him like that. How, I don't know how old Tom is now, but. He, he was probably like around 18, 19. Now. Yeah, so yeah, they were young. Yes. And I was, I wasn't, you know, I was, I was a few years younger than them. And they would come and stay at my house. So. Yeah. That was like how I met all those dudes and started filming the part for Jersey Riding and all that stuff. So I don't. I've never even seen that part. Man, I haven't seen that. In, I don't know, ten years, yeah. maybe longer. Dude's like straight <laughs> up, that dude's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised I even remembered that that was. Yeah, the first, first one I remember. I think I think Darren sent me like a man made video, and that's so that came along or you know shortly after. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. yeah, that was probably the thing. So, span. Do you yeah. got any, you got any good stories about staying up with Chase D back in the day? Any, what, what would you guys did you guys write FDR a little? Chase he wrote FDR in the early days, didn't he? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, dude. yeah. used to kill. No, I've seen. DR. I mean, I've 
I remember we we picked him up at uh, FDR that one time. We on used that. to go ride it all the time. I mean, I don't. I think. I mean, there was a stage where you know you could say to D Hart, "Hey, let's go to the skate park," and you know he would be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome." You know, but he's more of a street rider now. But um, definitely, you know, when I first got up there, we would go ride FDR all the time. Yeah. You know? And we'd even go ride it at night sometimes. We'd go and that seems park. Squirrely. We'd, 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 that go, seems so we'd go drive there and just like park the headlights in front of like, you know, a certain small part of it and just ride that. Just because, I don't know. Because you're teenagers and exactly that's what you, you want to do. do. <laughs> like, yeah. You want to ride and. I remember, I remember we were down there one night and Bam was down there and he was doing the same shit. <clears throat> and he was like shooting an ad or something. Yeah. Like I remember seeing it like a month later. Was he like chill with you guys down there? Or, he didn't say anything to us, but he had a fucking Hummer lighting up the back <laughs> vert wall and he had his Lambo down there. So like somebody drove the Hummer and then he drove the Lambo. So like <laughs> that was definitely in Bam's heyday. Oh, that yeah, like what early two thousands? Yeah, he ain't doing that shit no more. No, no, he he built like me now. <laughs> he might be built bigger than me now. Yeah, but yeah, um, I don't know. I I would go. I would go up and stay with D Hart, and then I would also, um, you know, spend go spend you know a little bit of time in Bethlehem, and then go bounce back down to Philly, and just kind of go. It's only a little over an hour away. So. Yeah. Just catch a ride whenever. That's a good... I mean, those years, especially in that area, seem, I mean, that seems like prime to do that. You know, the trails, yeah, FDR, I mean, you had a whole bunch of new dudes kind of coming up in that area, you know? The scene in Bethlehem at that time was so strong, man. It was... Uh, I'm like, I'm really glad that I got to experience those years of it because I feel like they were probably some of the best, you know? Who was, who was like, riding and digging out there at that time? Everyone, man. It was... Uh, the first year I ever went out there was the last year of NOM. Okay. So, I don't know what year they got plowed, but, I mean, at that time... Uh, it's like 2003. I mean... 2004. I don't know. I'm just... This is a ballpark, you know, but I, I, could, I would say that, you know, in, in the city of Bethlehem, between, you know, your posh and NOM locals, you probably had 50 people that rode trails in the city. That's crazy. And they were just... They were, and there's so many other little spots. Yeah. In that, in that area. Yeah, it was just, nice. it was just insane. I don't you know. Do it trail, was, uh, you just hit like six sets of trails. It's so crazy because like I know even in like my town like, you know you talk to Inman and he's just like, tr just trying to scrape up two bodies to go dig with him. You know like, nowadays it's just you know and I know that's probably one of the strongest trail scenes like ever in the nation. Maybe maybe ever. You know. Definitely one of the strongest ones. In History. Yeah, I mean, at that that time period, especially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I can remember going to Caddy for its, you know, first few years and just seeing you going back every summer and just seeing what those dudes have done. And I haven't been there in, <laughs> I don't know, I haven't been there since two years before Mikey got hurt. Oh wow. So. It's been a long time. Yeah. And I haven't been it's back... Literally 10 years. Yeah, I haven't been back to Bethlehem since Mikey got hurt. So, uh, you know, I'm due for a visit for sure. Yeah. I need to get back up there. And it's amazing that that stuff is, is still going up there. And, you know... I mean, the, Posh is all legal now and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Caddy so, as well. Caddy, yeah. And I think it, it has been for I years. I mean, how old's Posh now? Tw it's oh, 20... 20 uh, 22 years old. Damn. It's almost it's, old as Burnside. It's That's Jay's, crazy. Jay's just keeping it alive down there, man. It's yeah. uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I feel bad. I've lost touch with a lot of the people up there, and yeah, I need to I need to get back up there. I'm sure they'd be psyched if you came up. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. So I've kind of after those trips. I mean, that's right about the same time Chase D got on fit and. Uh huh. And then what was the second video you guys kind of all filmed? Was it the second video you all guys kind of went in on? I guess it was, was it Fit Life. I think it was Fit Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that was the. I'm pretty sure that was the first Fit part that I filmed. Okay, and I think Chase D had like a 
lip part or something maybe. Yeah, that sounds right. I, also yeah. another video I haven't seen in years. Yeah, I think that's... I'm just trying to remember because I think that's... Okay, I think I know which video it is. I think it's the one where Inman, like, Rex Bunny hopping over the wall into Burnside. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, that part was so good. Yeah, that's like... that. You know, some of those earlier fifth videos were so fucking good, man. Everybody For on the real. team, like... I, I mean, feel like... That was like... It was Everybody could have had the last part. Days, man. Yeah. yeah, dude, the team was just like... That was it. Yeah, Robbie did was, a good job yeah, putting together. Absolutely. Because even like Inman, like he, he saw the talent in a lot of you guys when you were really young. And, yeah. And just said it. I mean, it's like setting up a basketball or a football team. You're like, all these pieces are going to work super well together. And I mean, you had those first few videos that. Of, you know, funny. Oh, yeah. Talent and then putting it no, Robbie's great at that stuff, you know? Oh, absolutely. But yeah, that video. That video. Is, it's yeah, epic. I'm, I'm glad I got to be a part of that for sure. Yeah, so I mean, you you were on you rode for Fit for a while, filmed three video parts with them. Uh, so two. I don't know why I can't remember any of this. I stuff. can't. I mean, there's. I, I think guess two. it was Fit Life, Stay Fit. Yeah, that's the. Uh, just two. Yeah, just two. Yeah. Because I remember Stay Fit, you came up our way for a little. Yeah, and I filmed. Stay with Justin for a couple of weeks. That was like. You know, I'm glad I got to ride Salem and all that stuff up there before it got to get yeah, it's, away. A few people have been out there, they might be get the hip line running. Like, you know, you know Montana? Yeah. Yep. He's yeah. kind of back and forth in town. He's been going out there trying to get things rolling again. So he might just move back for the winter because he's been saying winter's in Hawaii. And he, I need to really just start riding dirt more. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, I... I'll, uh, you know, I'll bounce around at night whenever it's running, but, you know, they're tabletops now. So yeah, I haven't been down there and looked at it. I don't, I mean, they're, they're a lot of fun, and it, I think it, it works really well for, uh, the style. It, it being 9th Street. Yeah. But, um, Not what it was. I don't know, I need, to, I need to get to some real dirt jumps and get back in the air. <laughs> it's fun, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I haven't rode dirt. <laughs> I have a road. Yeah. I'm trying. I just get stuck riding cement, man. I, I don't know. It's just. It's. I mean, that's. I guess it's fun, and it's. You know, it's it's more convenient. Obviously. No, it's. I mean, definitely. Like, um, I mean, where I live, it's like I'll just go to the same four parks over and over, and I'm like, yeah. you got your lines. I get off work, roast around. I'm like, cool. Yeah. You know, but it at the same time, as good as that is. It kind of is a detriment a little to like the way we all kind of grew up riding BMX to where you had to work a little more to, I think, have that fun where you actually appreciated, you know, what you were riding more maybe. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like, I mean, as easy as it is to go to park, I, I mean, you remember back in the day, you'd just find some ratty quarter pipe or... It didn't you, matter. You, you, you were so psyched on so little back then, you know? I still feel that way. I still have... You know, sometimes I still have the most fun at, you know, a smaller park that yeah. isn't built that well, you know, rather than a brand new park that's built perfect. No, I, you know? I go to places I and I feel spoiled. I mean, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to ride this, you know, because I have so many good parks around me. I'll be like, what am I seeing? <laughs> like, what is yeah. wrong with me, you know? The old Vancouver Park. No, not the, <laughs> never the old Vancouver Park. <laughs> never. <laughs> the best park. <laughs> that's just you and Bob. There weren't any really old cement parks. You were just riding indoor wood parks, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, that was uh, kind of my, my transition out of racing was when the first indoor park opened up in Austin. Which one was that? It had a weird name. It was called uh, the, it was called the Intellect Rollers Realm. So, um, this family. Their son, uh, he rollerbladed at the time, and it was actually really good. And um, so I think the name, kind of Rollers Realm, kind, yeah. of, kind of punned off that. But um, whenever that opened, um, obviously, you know, we, we heard, heard about it kind of through everybody from 9th Street, because, you know, obviously I was still riding there. And... Once we went there, I don't know, I, I learned within the first three, four times of me going that, I don't know, I, I enjoyed that way more than being at the track. Yeah. 
and it was just way more laid back. I don't know, it was way, way less of a training aspect that went into it, and it was more just kind of jumping and just doing whatever I wanted to do. Yeah, you just know? hanging out with the guys. And... Exactly. So that was kind of my transition from, you know, racing into riding skate parks. Um, so that, that, that skate park was there for probably three or four years, and then it moved um, up near Georgetown, which is, I don't know, honestly, close to an hour away from okay. Austin. So it was kind of tough. I mean, it, you know, it made, it was a situation where I went from going from the, to the skate park five days a week to, you know, maybe two. Yeah. So it kind of sucked. But then you guys, didn't you guys get a few other indoor ones? Like, wasn't there like Ramp Ranch and a few things like a little bit after that? So Ramp Ranch was the one um, up in Georgetown. Oh, that's, okay. That's that. It, it changed names and, oh, moved, okay. and moved up north. Yeah, because I remember I went there Ramp for like Ranch. the FBMT1 contest. So it wasn't until probably four or five years after that until we got another skate park, m M&M, m that opened up. It was in the same parking lot as Five Hip. Yep, yep. And that only lasted for a year and a half or so. And then we had another indoor park called the Skate Park of Austin. With that big bowl in it, right? Yeah. But that, you know, that really came years later from, okay. from Ramp Ranch opening. So, and we didn't get our first cement park until, um, I don't know, within the last 10 years. Is that, uh, which that's one? Mabel Davis. Yeah, okay. It's actually that's actually the one that's it's it's close to my house. Now. Okay, yeah, I rode that one. I ate shit there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really hot, and I went to just. I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give her a little push to the deep end, but you know, it's that kind of barely curved yeah. quarter, and I wasn't used to that pull and push on it, and I just popped out, did the dead air all the way to flat. <laughs> I actually really like that back wall. No, I, I think know, it. I, I like mellow when 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 something's ten feet or taller. I would prefer that it just sits barely under vert. Yeah, or just goes straight to it. Like not not even like you know less than an inch. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like, and I think that's what that bowl is. So you can you can charge at it. And I just wasn't used to that to, barely that that little bit of curve on it. You know. Yeah, I like that feeling too because it feels like you're in a big pool. No, I think so if I wrote, like, I mean, more I more like that pocket air. Feeling. Yeah, I think I was literally there for like 15 minutes. I think it was like 104 degrees outside. Yeah, you need time there. Like, sure. you know, where you're just like, oh. There's only a few. There's thing. only a few people that ride that bowl really good. It, it seems like a fun bowl. Who do you enjoy watching ride that? Clint, Clinton, Matt, the whole, the whole, yeah. Creedence, the whole Creedence crew kills it. Joe rides it really well. Will Blunt rides it really good. Um, I'd say the usual good. suspects. I'd say that's about it. Yeah, when I've seen Chad, Os Chad Osborne ride it a few times, he kills it. Surprisingly, I've seen Lacey get in there a couple times and he's got tranny skills. Fucking blast, you know, yeah. seven or eight feet out. Yeah. I think I saw that on Instagram. I think he yeah. had a picture and he's just roasting the deep end. Yeah. And I was oh, like, yeah. I was like, that's what's good. <laughs> like, and that's just like, I don't know, that's just after hitting it, you know, three or four times. Well, that dude. He actually spent some time in there. Yeah. That that dude's, that dude's extremely talented yeah. at writing, you know. He always has been. Yeah. yeah. I remember, you know, when he was a little kid, just ripping, turn down fakies, like, so high. And he was little back then, too, like. Yeah, he was. So, yeah. Um. Well, shoot. Well, we were talking about the fist stuff. Kind of, um, let, let's go into kind of your and Robbie's relationship. You guys have known each other for a while. Did that start when Road Fools came through? Did he see you then? or how I've did... known Robbie from the race days. Okay. So, um, I mean, I can remember, you know, getting his autograph at Nationals and shit back in the day. Who was he riding for back then? Do you remember? It's probably, I don't. DK? Who was? It wasn't. It wasn't, you know, it was after, like, his Auburn days or, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think there was DK. Who was a weird one? He was more kind of on the way out. It was more when he was, like, on, like, Base Brooklyn, I think. And mm -hmm. pop, maybe even riding a standard. He wrote, okay. he, he wrote SMs for a little in the early yeah, day, yeah. yeah. But not, not I'm trying to think. Because like, I remember seeing him at a Grants, I think, in 96 or 97. Yes, 96, probably. Yeah. He's probably, he probably was riding maybe a standard then. 
Yeah, yeah, he's probably right. Yeah, at that point. Because it was he, he was, was with standard. a big Long Island crew. Yeah, yeah, he was not standard at that point. Yeah, I, I remember he rode for some weird race company right before DK, like Univega. Univega. That's when I met yeah. him. I met him. He had a Univega. Univega. He was at a uh, Marino Valley. We were riding the mini ramp. He was doing like the nose bonk manuals, and I was like. You kind of like. I was so confused. I'm like, that's a Univega. Like, I was just some kid from yeah. who knows where, and I was like, all right, man, you got a Univega. That's another one that you probably wish that you kept. You know, imagine if you had the Univega hanging up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you guys knew each other from race days, and then yeah, um, and you just and keep in touch after that. Well, um, obviously, he came here for Road Fools One. Uh, I saw him then. And, you know, not long afterwards, he was kind of starting to spend a lot of time in Austin because he had started, you know, he was a part of T- T1 with Joe and Todd. Yeah. And so he was spending a lot of time in Austin. So, I mean, I knew him from back then. Um, and then, you, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he kind of brought me on board in the earlier stages of FIT as, a, you know, as a flow rider. Yeah. You were like one of the first... Yeah, I want to say just me, just Justin was too. Like, yeah, could, like, yeah. like me and Justin got put and, and on Edwin like a too, like that, that. You were like, you three were kind of the. It was, who was it there? Edwin. Edwin. Well, I think it. Edwin, I think was pro. Edwin was pro. I think he went straight to pro. Yeah. No, no, he was he was flow for a minute. For real? Yeah. Hmm. Shit, I, mean, I remember Justin was flow because sure. I'm pretty learning sure this was. stuff in this Beca- interview. <laughs> because before the fit thing, I remember. Robbie saw Justin at Woodward and like gave him a T1 progression, uh, and then when he did that stuff, he was like, yeah. you know, hey, we want to hook you up with this yeah. fit bike, and Jay was like, I get. But it happened really fast, right? Then. I was like, yeah, was for sure. Long. And um, there were that there was a, a couple years of that, you know, I I was on flow for a while, yeah, through fit and. They would help me, um, you know, they would help me get to a couple of contests, you know, like CFBs and stuff here and there back in the day, which was super helpful. Um, but then he actually put me on the pro team, I guess it, w- it was for that Puerto Rico video. Oh, yeah. So I remember it was right after my 18th birthday. Those little, those fit tour videos were fun back in the day. Yeah. What was it? They did Puerto Rico and Barcelona? Yeah. yeah. So Barcelona was before Puerto Rico. So you weren't on the Barcelona? I wasn't on okay. Barcelona. That was I was still on the flow team then. Yeah. So I guess the Puerto Rico video was like kind of my welcome to the pro team trip or whatever. And how did the team mesh back then? You know, it seemed like it was a good little solid crew. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. And a good mix of different styles back then that too. That trip, that trip was me, Robbie, BF, Bob, Wiz. Um, then the fit team back then it was Mikey, Edwin. Van, Justin, uh, Nate Hanson, he's still, no, no. Did, we, did you say BF? Yeah. Um, Tom White, was Tom White on that one? No, Tom wasn't on there. I'm probably missing somebody, but anyways, it was, it was, it was a crazy trip. Yeah. You know? Well, Mikey, did I say Mikey? Yep. Obviously I said Mikey. Um, and that was, you know, that was the first time I had ever gotten to travel with him. And yeah. obviously at that time, he was the only person that I was really focusing on. I oh, don't know. yeah. Mike's you know, so sick, dude. He, I was like, I, I don't know, 18 year old me, and still, still to this day, I mean, I like idolized that dude for real. I mean, I tried, I dressed like him, I fucking rode, tried to ride as much as I could like him, did everything he did. All that shit. So being on that trip with him was was huge. Yeah. You know? um, it was, you know, I was trying to just make sure I, you know, I didn't piss anybody off, really. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. All in all, it was fucking awesome, and it worked out. Puerto Rico's you know? good? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, there's... There's definitely crazy stories from it, but on the short end of it, <laughs> that it was a good trip for sure. Yeah. Um, how did kind of how did everything kind of come about with Colt? I know there was kind of I feel like Fit kind of was maybe outgrowing itself a little. Like everything felt like maybe it was getting too big. I don't know. It just seems like the whole situation may have been a little stressful and. It was, for sure. I mean, I'd be lying to, if I said that it wasn't, you know. 
Um, but, you know, my relationship all along with Fit was through Robbie. Yeah. And, you know, that's how I got on. He He's who I knew beforehand, before I rode for Fit. I mean, you know, we had just talked about, you know, I knew him since back in the race days from riding with him at the Grand. So, um, you know, really without going into all the politics of it, you know, Robbie was the the main sole person that I dealt with and supported the whole time that I was at Fit. Yeah. And once I found out that he was no more, he was leaving, you know, uh, you know, his position was gone, whatnot. Um, I just felt like it was the right thing for me to do was to follow him. And was just, because, like, I mean, basically, I mean, he's had my back since the very beginning. And my relationship, the whole time I was at FIT, was spent communicating with him. Yeah. So I felt like if he was taken out of the equation, I didn't want to be a part of it. And the, I, mean, I don't know. Is... It was just, it was where my... I was comfortable with him. I was, I you know, I didn't want him to leave. You know, when you guys have been, you guys were close friends that whole time. So I mean, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, it, you. It feels like you looked at more, like business side. I mean, this was like more of a friendship thing. Like my, I want to stay there and hold my friend up through something. You know, that's exactly. You know, I didn't. I didn't look at it as like you know fuck you, I'm leaving fit. I looked at it as, like, I'm just going to support my friend in this and follow him. Yeah. Because, uh, obviously, he's no longer a part of this, and I don't feel right maintaining a part of it without him, seeing as how I wouldn't have been involved with it without him in the first place. Yeah. So, um, I was going to follow him wherever he went, really. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how that, that's that what was friends kind do, of, you know that was kind of you know when we started talking about Cole yeah you know and I remember you know I, I remember Robbie calling me um you know after he had just gotten the call that you know he was going to be no longer a fit and I mean I, I think I was you know probably one of the first few people that he that he called you know after yeah he had found that out and I told him right then, I was like, let's do it. Like, yeah. um, do you want me to do it right now? Like, I'm ready. You yeah. know, like, that's that's how that's how much I had his back. You know, that's, I don't know. And, yeah, I mean, that's... And the rest it, is history. Was, I mean, the rest guess... is history. I mean, it didn't happen that day. It happened a couple of days later. But uh, I was the first to go. Yeah. And... It... I mean, all in all, looking back, like, I, I remember when it happened, it seemed, like, so, like, crazy. It was big, for sure. It, it was you know, crazy, it but happened. looking back, it seems... And, and it, it happened right after I had won the Cup, too. And a lot of people speculated that, you know, it was, like, this crazy planned thing and whatnot because I I was wearing a cult hat. Yeah. And, but that, that wasn't the case because, bef- you know, cult, before cult was ever thought of as a, as a bike company or anything uh you know one of my best friends that I grew up with Adam Roy uh he he had started it off as a zine yeah I remember Colt, that yeah Colt was a zine that's like that's what it initially was and I remember I don't know me and him lived together and we went and got we went to the mall and got these hats made and that was <laughs> literally the kind of <laughs> that was why I wore the fucking hat like yeah. that's I don't know it was total coincidental thing and honestly, uh, you know, when the company was first being talked about, that we were even thinking about starting something, I don't know, it, Colt wasn't thought about for some time. There was you know? other names. There everything. was other names involved, for yeah. sure. You know, so none of that, none of that relation, you know, it's it's not relatable in any way. Yeah. So, you know, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like that's. Uh, any, any names you wanted to divulge that were potential candidates? For who? The company. 
For the company? Shit, dude, I can't even remember, honestly. It's hard when you go through names. It's you like, just say so many and you're like, that's lame. That's <laughs> lame. You just start saying them over you know, and over. But I think it wasn't, you know, you know, I think we definitely struggled with that for, you know, a couple weeks or whatever. But I think once we realized that we could bring Adam on board and kind of use his whole artistic mentality behind the whole brand and... I mean, that it's insane how much we benefited from him being a part of it. I mean, I don't think Colt would be what it is today without him. Yeah. Because he he gave us that edge initially and just, you know, gave us that image that separated us from everyone at a time that, it, that was needed. Yeah. You know, it was just like, I feel like those first couple years for Colt were just like, fucking freight train like move you're getting fucking it's nailed incredible how yeah how you know, went from yeah start, official start to and I still one feel year like but is, is it five it's almost six years isn't it yeah yeah but even in that first year like how yeah. fast the company was it was erupted it was man it was erupt- it erupted you know like we went, we did that federal cult trip that trip in the was first dope, couple yeah. years you know we did a demo that there was probably 600 kids there, you know, like, like it's like one of the biggest demos I've ever done, you know. Is that the one in uh, Scotland? No, that was at a, it was at Stoke Plaza okay. in, in England. But just you know, every stop on that whole tour was just, uh, I mean, yeah, we brought them out and they, they came out. I remember too. seeing that video <laughs> and seeing the, I think seeing the pictures and there was, I haven't looked at it for a while, but there was a few stops where you looked at it and you're like, it almost felt like you were almost looking like in an 80s demo with just the amount of people there. Like, you were like, yo, there is, a, you know, you don't see that at demos Rockville that much, you know? Like, yeah. like one of those Rockville just, shots. Yeah, one of the Rockville just, shots with like. Deep, like it's just oh. more, than, more than anything, is we, we developed such an image in, the, in the, the, for that early age of the brand that, um, I think that's that's kind of how we solidified ourselves so quickly was just because um, I don't know we came out swinging and it was quick and we just didn't stop swinging. And yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I really need to say. <laughs> that's that's cult. <laughs> I mean, if you got you and Dak on it, that's some heavy swinging, so... Yeah, I mean, the whole fucking team, really, you know? I don't know. I think it's it's uh, it's good because everybody brings something different to the table, you know? We don't really have duplicates, you know? Everybody brings something different. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of teams and riders nowadays where you're just getting a lot of the same dudes kind of over and over. I mean, it, I mean I'll be the first one to say it. You know, you're watching things and you're like... Oh, this dude, or this type of dude, you yeah. know, or it's like just little categories you can plop dudes into, and it's nice when, you know, it's nice when you are surprised by a rider. For sure. You know, like if a rider you think's doing one thing, and then he comes and hits you with something else, you're like, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, I, this is what this is what I wanted, you know, instead of just now being predicting seventy five percent of what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, like you're like, <laughs> oh, in, in a, here we go. Video, it's like, but, yeah. Um, we were speaking a little bit earlier. You know, we were talking about some of the Bethlehem stuff. And yeah, I got gotten into the, uh, it sounds the like era of living in Bethlehem with, like, at Stauffer's and the Honk House. You got any good little stories you want to share from, from there? Um, so what's the... Yo, I'm not even, like, from that area. Yeah. So I'm a little... So what's, what is the Honk House? Like, fill so me the, in. The Honk House was the house where... You know, most of the main builders at Caddy lived at, and it was it was less than a mile from Caddy. Okay, so it sounded like it was Stauffer. No, no so this, this okay. was um this was this was Caddy locals. So, okay, so po- uh, right after Caddy started. Stauffer was a posh local, um, which which is crazy because I mean these these sets of trails are probably less than fifteen minutes apart, but yes, they do have their full sets of locals that they don't really go to each other's trails too much. So, you know, it's it's pretty wild. You know, you have, you have the, two of the best sets of dirt jumps in the world. Yeah. And, you know, I can't, I can't really vouch for now because I haven't been up there in so long. But back then, 
You know, it was like, no, like I'm a caddy local. I'm riding caddy. I don't go ride posh. You yeah, know? and that, it was that like the same. A little bit these days because, because like. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure because it's like thin, it's thinned out so, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But back then, but back it, then was it was like there was like yeah, you had full crews at each trail, so it was exactly, like, and you could just focus on your own and not worry about. It. Yeah. So, um, and I spent my I spent my fair time staying at posh house and caddy house. Yeah. You know, so I I experienced both sides of it. But the caddy house, the hunk house, was. Um, that was just, you know, that was where all the young kids went to party, and it was where, I don't know, it was it was just the party house, really. Yeah. Like, you know, if you spent a summer up there at the hunk house, you know, it was riding dirt jumps for fucking 10 hours a day, then you'd probably go steal a sandwich from Wawa, <laughs> and then you'd get someone to you know buy you a six pack of fucking lion's head or whatever and i'm sorry six pack 12 pack case whatever and you would just get wasted and that was that was every day that was every single day and yeah i mean i used to stay in, i used to sleep in this room it was called the the rough house room i mean and this dude that lived there matt treble I mean, he's like 6'3", 200 pounds, you know, fucking brick shit house, And I would wake up with him picking my sleeping bag, like, up over his head, and he would just fucking drop me at, like, 7 in the morning, you know? Like, it was just one of those houses where, um, I don't know, everyone fucked with you. you. You know, you had to be tough. You had to be tough to stay there, yeah. live there. That's and usually the good scenes that are like that. Like, no one got it easy. Everyone, everyone got it. Yeah. You know, especially me. <laughs> <laughs> do you got any other? You, do you think that you were talking about some other stories? You got any other stories you're trying to get out? Um, even just talk about like, because you pretty much had no money then too when you were living there. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean. Uh, yeah. I mean. That kind of just goes with, I don't think anybody in the, in the trail scene, you know, like none, none of us had money. So like, you know, everybody that you're riding with, everybody that you're staying with, everybody that you're living with, everyone's on the same page. You know, you're shopping cheap, you're drinking cheap, you're eating cheap, you know. What was a typical day of food consumption and, and how, how much did you spend a day? You this? know, you would, you know, grocery store visits, you know, you you try and keep it under like 40 bucks or so and that was to eat for the week you know so that mixed with you know probably about the same amount of money for drinking money for the week uh mixed with you know i wasn't joking we used to go steal sandwiches from wawa all the fucking time wawa sandwich is good yeah, and when they're Especially. when you can get the biggest one and just walk out of it, you know, walk out of there yeah. with it. I mean, yeah, and that was that was how we did it. I mean, uh, I can remember taking a trip with um, Doug Falk, D Hart, and this other girl, Katie, that we used to know from Pennsylvania, and we drove to Chicago for a week and stayed with. Kevin Porter and combined all four of us we had no more than like 30 bucks to get us there and back <laughs> and we got there on a on Doug's parents gas card and we stopped at D-Art's parents house on the way out and just like kind of fucking raided their pantry took a bunch of food and that was it you know like we would <laughs> we just did it yeah we just did it when and and not only that but we got a lot done you know like each one you know i think d Hart filmed almost half a video part for uh shutter for shutter speed on that trip and as, as well as kp you know so it's just like yeah i mean uh it was an era of definitely you know roughing it and that and knowing that that's what you had to do and it would you would it was just the way it was you know it was uh very fucking carefree it was just uh 
I don't know. You did. You had nobody telling you no. You did what you wanted to do. It's, it's crazy just, how some of those, you know, like those roughing it stories or just being broke is always some of like the best times, you know, like. Absolutely. I, those are trips I'll never forget, man. Like, yeah, because uh, I don't know. I, I think it, it, it's good for everyone to be put in those situations, uh, at least. Well, it brings you twice. close to your, your friends with that you're traveling. You guys are all. Absolutely. You're all. It's, it, it makes you realize what a trip is really about. Yeah. It's not. Takes you out of your comfort zone. It's a to- yeah, totally. It's a, uh, you know, you don't need these extremities to get you by. No, definitely. Um, you want to talk about Road Fools? I mean, or actually before that, oh, yeah. even about the live, staying at the, on the south side of Bethlehem at Gilly Stoffers and Digs. Yeah, so that was like, um, so obviously, you know, really caddy. Um, you know, really didn't evolve a whole, you know, until those, those first couple of years, you know, cause the first time I went up there, it w- you know, all those guys were still digging at Nam. So, um, yeah, those, the first, my first couple of years spent in Bethlehem were spent on the South side at like Stoffer and Gilly's house. And that's where Dave King lived. Um, cause I was riding posh all the time. So, uh, I had driven up to there um, from Austin with Timmy Martin and a couple other people, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm really glad to that I get to experience um, staying and riding with those guys at, at in that era, just because obviously Stoffer was somebody that I really look up, looked up to, and I don't know. Uh, just watching some of those old East Coast Destruction videos and just Anthem and all of that stuff and just getting, you know, seeing seeing Posh and all that stuff on, on video and then getting to go ride it firsthand was, um, it was a dream of mine, you know. So, uh, being up there for those first few years was, it was a treat for sure. But definitely crazy. You know, I had to, I, same thing, man. I, I had to really, I had to really earn their respect. You know, like they, coffee. yeah. I mean, they treated me like shit, dude. I was they were <laughs> they were dickheads, you know. And I'm I'm really I, happy I knew them and was friends with them and still am to this day because I feel like I don't know they 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 definitely toughened me up a little bit and kind of probably made me a little bit of the way that I am today you know, by experience and some of that stuff, you know, so I'm happy that I was able to. Yeah, you just say all those names together, it's like all, I mean, super sure, legend, you know, you know dudes yeah. that... Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, everybody knows them, but they're kind of like these, uh, you know, if, if, if you didn't really spend much time in Bethlehem, then most likely you didn't really get to see the true side of a lot of these people, you know? I was lucky I got to... So it was, you know, a lot of them were more of a myth, and you would just hear stories of these people more than anything. So getting to go and hang out with them for, like, months at a time at that age was eye-opening. Yeah. on, on, On all sorts of levels, you know? From nightlife to riding to just... All sorts of shit, man. I learned a lot in those first couple of years. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> How did uh, Timmy Martin have an effect on a young Chase Hall? Man, we used to spend a lot of time back in the day. Uh, spend a lot of time together back in the day. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I had kind of met... I mean, that was initially kind of how I met Chase Dehart was... Um, through Timmy and Doug Falk and um, some of those, you know, earlier dead memory guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. He, you know, the, he, he went through a big a period. I, he, he's, he's riding now, but, you know, he went through a large period of time where he was just drinking and not really riding. And that, you know... Probably from eighteen to twenty or so, we 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 hung out quite a bit, and um, 
you know, there was definitely a, a time where I kind of had to peel away a little bit just because I felt like I started to kind of follow the same path and just like, I don't know, I was partying a little bit too much myself and I was starting to notice it on the bike and I could feel it for sure. And I definitely, I don't know, I knew that it was something that I didn't want it to affect me. So, um, I don't know, we stopped hanging out for a few years, but we're, we're, we're friends again. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm happy to see that he's actually riding a lot again. Yeah, it seems like he's, he's riding a lot. It's yeah. Awesome here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like, you know, fuck you, I don't ever want to see you again type thing. It was just like, I knew that if we maintained hanging out the way that we did, I wasn't going to be able to get, get away from it, man. I just had to get, I don't know, I had to surround myself with people that were uh, doing different stuff, basically. Yeah. You know, and that's that's kind of where the, the switch flipped for me a little bit. Um, let's try and bring up just a bit ago. I know a lot of people, when we were looking at things, were bringing up some Road Fools yeah. questions. And, yeah. you know, how many, I mean, you went on a bunch, I mean, we were all on I was a bunch only of, on, were you on like three? 14, 15. I was only 14 and 15, and then I was on two rock and roll, wait, one rock and roll. Yeah. How, how is that going on, like, Road Fools? Because, I mean, kind of, and at that time, I mean, I think a lot of younger listeners listen to this don't realize, like, at that time, that was, like, a, such a big deal, you know? Yeah, I mean, so, obviously, for a rider like me, I mean, I grew up you watching actually, so them. You actually lived with Road Fools once. Yeah, I mean, I, grew, I, 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 I owned every one of them. I mean, I watched every one of them. Yeah. You know, so when it got to 14... I had seen every one leading up to that, you know, kind of religiously. Yeah. Like, I mean, I knew everything about him, you know, who was on him, you know, all that shit. So, yeah, it was huge. The first, you know, when I got asked to go on a road pool, I was, yes, for sure, you know, um, no questions asked. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy I got to experience a couple of those um, Trying, I mean, I know a good story about Chase taking all my money. I did one, yeah. You won every, of... you won. Yeah, I hated that shit. You guys be rolling dice. <laughs> I'd like be looking down. So I took money from you. I took money from a lot of people on that trip. But the two best things about that trip were I took, <laughs> I took, I took a hundred bucks from Marco like instantly. I remember that. And he probably has never had that happen to him in his life. Like <laughs> you were rolling, like, you were straight his, rolling. The look on his face to like get have like a drunk me just like, you know, 19, 20 years old or whatever, just like snatch a $100 bill from him. He was like <laughs> Gonna shit himself. <laughs> you know? Like that is when the microwave so broke. <laughs> that's a different story. Yeah, the mic. Bring that no. But anyways, um, then then I was playing uh, with Morgan, and I was I was playing. Uh, so I would put up a hundred bucks, and if he lost, I had this like it was like a gnarly shot glass. It was like a du it was like bigger than a double shot. I think bottle. I remember it. Yeah. And I had a I, I had a bottle of rum, and I was just like mixing rum and cokes, and um, I don't know. I, as many of you probably know, Morgan doesn't drink, so um, we go through two hands of Skilo, and he loses two hands straight in a row. So he basically takes these you know, two and a half, like, full shots of rum. And, like, 15 minutes later, this is after a full day of riding, like, you know. <laughs> and Morgan was going, he was see, going hard back Morgan then. Morgan was going so fucking hard. He was going like, so hard. He, yeah, dude, I mean, he's so, I mean, yeah, he, I was, to put it this way, I, I had already been back at the bus for almost two hours before he got back there. So I was like was already like <laughs> hanging out and like drinking and shit and just chilling. And then he shows up and I'm like, oh, come on, let's play. You know, like I'll play for shots. And he's like, yeah, all right, let's do this. And I got him so fucking wrecked. Like in 15, 20 minutes, dude, it was so funny, man. I think I ended up, because I was just trying to come back because I was broke on the trip. So all I had is my per diem money. 
You took it. I ended up to put the cig out on my nuts. Yep. I don't that know was like that, for 20 that was bucks. pretty degrading, huh? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. yeah, I guess not. I've done there it a bunch. It's not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so. And then I was flat broke, and Marco told me to go swim through that grimy I remember pond. remember that. And I thought, yeah. the, remember we thought the there pond. Was that? that was a Jamie Spritz or Yeah, right? and I thought we could swim. And he's like, just go out there and belly flop. I go out. I'm like, it's only to my knees. He's like, belly flop. God. I jump in that thing. The next two days, I don't know if you remember, my eyes like burnt and then Jamie, like I got sick and then Jamie told Marco when that dried up that summer, there was like a dead cow carcass right there where I did that and oh, that was barely worth $85. It was, (laughs) it was rough. You, you demolished me on that trip and then I think I, I don't even want to say it, but whatever. He was not going to forget. I know I owe catfish. He's allowed to tattoo me at any time. Anywhere except for like someplace crazy of anything he wants. So I, I don't roll, I don't, I don't gamble anymore. He's like, fuck all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was rough. Um, any kind of little good stories you want to share? I mean, there's so many stories from those trips. Like, um, I'm trying, I don't, and they all mesh. Somebody was asking me a question about that. I, I'm like, I can't even remember. Everything meshes together. Like, I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a, I'm a, Lucero fan. I mean, getting to go on the rock and roll fools with Lucero was an awesome one. You know, and Hoffman was on that trip. And I remember, mm-hmm. I don't know, Mikey's Mikey's son was born on that trip. I oh, he left we early. Were, That's yeah, right. I yeah. forgot about I that. We were we were rooming together the whole time up until then. So it was like me and Dylan Smith and Sean and Mikey. Like we would room together every night. And I remember, you know him getting a call in the middle of the night and like having to wake us up like you know i'm flying to salt lake right now like I, you know yeah i remember no, I no one's about to be born like i don't know i mean there's a lot of memories on those trips i mean that whole you know really the whole trip is a memory uh i mean it was just a, it was a special thing that I'm, I'm glad that I got to be a part of, of a, a couple of them while they were around because I feel like Road Fools and Props in general played a, a huge part and huge role in BMX. Oh, yeah. To get it to where it is today. And, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy to have grown up through that era and been a part of it. And I don't know, I can appreciate it and respect it. I mean, I got the box set, like, um, you know, a few weeks ago. And just got right into watching some of my old favorite issues. And it was just like brought me back to being a little kid again. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's, I, I love that, you know. That's, props is probably something that I'll love most about BMX. Like, it, like it's an epic videos, time in BMX. You know? like, like, yeah, dude. It's such a great documentation of so many things that. I remember when I was like, yeah, young, I mean, just being just, hyped to watch library. the credits, you know, because the credits yeah. are always like this part. You'd be like, yo, what went down? You know, what really went down the contest? And you'd watch the credits and you'd be like, that really went down. Because I remember my girl got mad at me about what really went down in the I credits st- once. I still remember the, the Millennium video. So it's the, the year end 2000 yeah. video. That's like one of my favorite props ever. Yeah. You know? And I couldn't. I mean, I remember owning it on VHS, and it was one of the few tapes where I literally watched it so many times that it didn't work anymore. Yeah. And, I don't know, I can still put it on, I still know all the fucking music and all that, it's like I can still get just as psyched. Like, yeah, I mean, people are listening to this, and they don't have the props box set, I mean, they should, yeah, you should snag that thing. Yeah, if you don't, I, mean, I don't know, like, that's, yeah, I mean, if you don't know about it, then... Yeah, I mean, research. it's got so it's, it's got all it's it's crazy how much stuff it's kind of overwhelming. Like when you first put it in, and you're just like, and you're like, yeah, if you don't um, know the end, yeah, you're like, what am I picking? So yeah, that yeah, I think like with the props trips, like yeah, just that, especially like once the road fools hit, like it just like, I mean, if you think about like skateboarding or any, any like whatever like stupid action sports, but I feel like. Marco and Chris and them documented what BMX really was at that time, personality-wise, riding-wise, like, so well. I mean, it, it really, like, as just a rider, it brought they you were in. Just, they were there at the right time. 
they they got in at the right time and honestly they kind of left at the right time it was it was just uh they they did exactly what they were supposed to do yeah you know and they built bmx they up a lot it, they did it right <laughs> yeah it, it, those those are fun man um yeah, I kind of, I don't know, we, I'm, I'm sure we got a little more gas, a couple more things. Yeah. How do you feel with, like, your city's just, like, exploding, it's becoming so popular, you know, everybody's, you know, even if you're not BMX, it's on everybody's tongue, people are coming in, the city's getting crowded, is it still feel like Austin to you, or is it starting to feel different, you know? I, I mean, it definitely still feels like Austin to me, um, I don't know, I, I bought a house almost two years ago, um, so I think that that's one of the things that um, doesn't make me too angry about more people coming here. Yeah. Because I know that uh, you know one day I do want to sell, you know, and I feel like with the amount of people that are moving here, it is going to help that, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I don't think it's gotten too bad. I mean, maybe in a couple years, uh, it might get a little worse. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm I'm not um, I'm not one of those people that I don't know. It's like oh, I know, get, don't, I, don't, I, don't move. Oh, Austin, I'm so pissed in Portland. You know? I get so pissed. <laughs> I'm like the worst. Like, but like. I just I always worry about like you know because you'll have like a good core scene you know in like certain cities you know I. Boston's been one of the cities at the forefront. But the MX scene just keeps growing here. You don't think like, and I always just worry about like, you know, the rent gets too much, and I don't know. It just, it just like. Well, it's wonder definitely if it, happening. Of both. Yeah, it just, it just the, seems like you're like, you wonder if it's gonna like push people out of the city, and just, I don't know. It just feels like. I mean, it sounds like it hasn't much, but like, you know, how it's really affecting the scene. I think the reality of it is, at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and you might as well embrace it. And I don't know if you can't, then maybe Austin isn't the place for you. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, because it's not slowing down and that is the rate of Austin. No, I don't think and it's, it's going to slow down at all. You know, I don't, I, I definitely don't think that it was expected and especially not at this rate. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it'll work. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. Um, I mean, you can look at it a lot of different ways, really, because there's there's ways people can benefit off of this type of growth as well. Yeah, you know, it's just however you apply yourself to it. Do you do you think the scene down here is going to change much with T one being gone? Um, well, yeah, I mean, for sure, T one has been a backbone of the scene uh, since it was created. Yeah, you know. Uh, but at the same time, with it leaving, I don't think that it's it's gonna kill the scene. Yeah, by yeah. Any means, you know, and uh, it's cool. I mean, it, it's it's now gonna live in a few different sections that are in a, in a few different yards. So yeah, that's what I've heard. Essentially, it's gonna create more spots. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's amazing what they've been able to do for so long. Oh yeah. But. Uh, you know, it'll it, it's it's good to it'll it, you know it's gonna live to tell another chapter. And sometimes change is good. You know? Absolutely, so. for sure. I mean, it is gonna be weird to drive past T one and it's gonna be a fucking hotel. You yeah. know that that'll, there's, there's, that'll be weird. There's spots in my town where I'll drive by, like you know Burnside, right next you know the parking lot where everybody hang out is like a 15 story building now. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, and you're just like, and it it's gonna be occupied soon. And there's gonna be moms. And with like little strollers and coffee, like that's also something that you can't do anything about. No, you yeah, as well, just accept it, you know. And that's like that's what we're doing. It just, it just, it's just kind of interesting to just think about it with the, how fast the cities grow, how it affects like the the BMX scene, you know, like for sure. Because a lot of BMX scenes, I feel like, are started because things are cheap, you know, and there's there's certain attributes that bring everybody in, you know. Well, that's what's awesome about Austin is you know since I've 
grown up riding here. I mean, there's so many more families and younger kids and stuff that have gotten into riding. Yeah. You know, compared to when I started. Yeah. Um, and now with there being all these public skate parks and all these surrounding cities and whatnot, um, I feel like it was like the perfect time to throw, like put on an amateur contest yeah. here in Austin. Um, and you just, you put one of those on last year, right? Yeah. So last year was the first year for Born and Raised. Um, uh, and do you have to be uh, from Austin to, to ride in that? <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. I, no, sorry. I just... I should I should talk, yeah. Um, so that's just the name of the contest. Okay. Is, uh, it's Born and Raised. Um, but I, I, I started it because... Um, after after I won X Games in 2014, the mayor would actually gave me my own day here in the city. So it's August 16th. So every year from now until I die, August 16th is Chase Hawk Day. That's in crazy, Austin. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. So um, definitely crazy. It's definitely you know it's a privilege that I never thought that I would be able to, you know, have whatever. Um, so, I felt like throwing an amateur contest would be the perfect kind of platform yeah. for, for this day, you know, and what better place to do it than House Park, Yeah, you know. So, um, yeah, this year we have, um, you know, we have way bigger plans for it. It's going to be a two-day event this year. Last year, it was only a single day, so we only ran street last year. This okay. year, we're going to run bowl and street. Yep. Um, and we're also going to bring in a bunch of outside ramps. Oh, cool. So it was something that we tried to do last year, but we didn't have time to get permits. So um, get it, we had to kind of brush it under the rug last minute. But this year... Uh, we're going to build a decent amount of extra stuff. So I think that'll be cool. It'll, it'll be, um, you know, it'll, it'll change it up significantly from last year. And, um, I think we're going to build some stuff in the bowl as well. Oh, so that'd be cool. It'll be cool. You know, it's it, like, nobody's ever brought in outside ramps and set them up at house park. You know? Yeah. So I think it'll change the layout of the whole place. Kind of remind me of that Hoffman contest in exactly. Oklahoma it'll where be, they had the few things set up. It'll be like that. Um, but uh, definitely probably more street orientated. Yeah. You know, and Dan Lacey and Dennis Anderson, Chad Curley are all going to be judging that event. So, you know, you kind of have these three elite professionals judging, you know, all the amateurs and that that's gonna make all the kids come. want to ride harder you know absolutely and um you know we have a cash jam that we're gonna do where it's basically you know 30 minutes people ride the bowl you know you can do you know it's kind of just a it's a it's something where everybody walks away with something I yeah mean, last year we had you know nine ten year old kids that were hitting two or three foot airs and they would get 20 bucks for it you know, oh, and it's just like, you know, up to, you know, other riders that are actually doing really cool stuff and like walking away with, you know, at least a hundred bucks or so. Yeah. So it's just, it's a cool way to kind of, um, make everyone feel like they're involved and, um, you know, really be a part of it. So. Yeah. And that's the thing that maybe builds like kids, especially young kids, like the amateur contest, like there's not very many nowadays. Exactly. And- you know, if a kid can go to a contest and not not experience the competing aspect for necessarily, but, com, you know, experience that camaraderie that he's not going to get from, like, seeing a pro contest where he's on the outside, you know, to where he can go in and just feel that, that energy of being around and other riders that are excited about it, you know? And we want to recreate that same platform and mentality that we essentially go through as yeah. pros, you know? We don't want it to be any different, you know, so... I mean, they're going through the same judging format. They're riding in heats. You know, it's all jam format. I mean, they have to ride 60-second runs and, you know, ride them efficiently and stuff. So it's it's uh, it's awesome. You know, yeah. I think it's it's important. It's it's. I, I had the option to ride an amateur contests when I was an amateur, so I feel like kids nowadays should have yeah. the same. 
there's more parks nowadays. I mean, it's just, it's kind of weird that there isn't more amateur contests now that there's even more skate parks, you know? Yeah. And my goal, uh, hopefully, is to turn it into a series. Yeah. You know? Um, I would, I mean, who knows? I mean, high hopes, but, uh, I mean, if essentially, if the street qualifier could turn into a qualifier to get an amateur in the X Games street, I mean, that would be... It'd be uh, amazing. That would be, that's my goal, you know? So that's some crew Jones stuff right there from Rad, you know. Yeah. Qualifying. I mean, that's the yeah, dream, man. That's the dream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, you tell your mom, and you're like, I'm about to do this. Yeah, totally. So, and 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 not only that, I mean, but we have a really good idea of you know kind kind of keeping these judges involved and you know doing a born and raised themed contest in San Diego yeah. where Dennis and Chad are from, and then also taking it overseas to Hastings, you yeah. know, and doing one with Dan Lacey, you know, maybe over at Source Park or something. So, oh, yeah, that'd be dope. Um, I think, you know, we have a really good platform there laid out for us, and I think it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 it's there. It just needs to happen. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Um, you want to touch on the Etnies video since you've been filming, the, filming for that for a while? Yeah. Um, you guys, have you been filming for a year and a half? Yeah, I would say two years. Two years? Two years. Okay. Because I, I, I started filming uh, almost immediately when I got on the team. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I would say that I filmed over three quarters of my footage with Mike Manzori. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, pre- I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for some good follow cam stuff at the park. He's yes, yeah. Um, he's he's yeah. an insanely good videographer. For those of you who don't know Mike Manzori, um, he used to be a professional skateboarder back in the day, uh, and he's been a professional cameraman for over 20 years. So you combine both those skills and. Uh, there really isn't much he can do. And for a bull rider like myself, I mean, he can, uh, long story short, he can make you look a lot cooler than you really are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm super excited for it. I, I see like little stuff on the, that and his Instagram and like your guys on yours and just seeing some of like the spots and especially with Mike yeah, filming, like absolutely. It, I'm, I'm just, really excited for it. Well, just being able, I mean, obviously, you know, Anybody that's watched the, you know, forward and grounded, I mean, the last two Etnies videos have been kind of monumental, oh, really, yeah. you know, it's, uh, when, when, when an Etnies video comes out, it's, it's the best thing that's come out for years. And I drove by it, the Taj ship today, the water, the one who hit, exactly. went through the water and like one of my favorite clips ever. Exactly. So, um having the opportunity to to film for an Etnies video myself and, you know, be a part of that legacy, uh, it's it's huge for me. I mean, I've taken it very serious. I mean, I want it to be the best stuff that I've put out to date. Yeah. You know? And I, that's that's hard for myself, it really is. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of pushing myself. And um, I don't know. Uh, I think the deadline is uh, coming up in September. Okay. And I've got four or five more trips planned. Who you been traveling with on on it? Um, honestly, the trips have been pretty transition and street focused. Okay. So it's kind of street riders on the street trip and transition riders on this transition trip. Yeah. And, um. I I kind of would prefer to travel with less people. Just because you get more done, yeah, uh, with a smaller crew. So me and Tom Dugan have done a majority of the traveling together, just because we ride a lot of the same stuff, and um, it it just makes sense to kind of send us both on the road because we can both get a lot of stuff. Yeah, because uh, we're both looking for all the same stuff, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, not like that, but. Uh, we just we work well together on the road, so yeah, I travel with Tom quite a bit. No, I mean that sounds like a good pairing, and it seems like you've been riding like a lot of pools for it and everything. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I think I'm at a point now where you know I I need to get on some of these more more a few more of these street trips and uh, you know really just try and get up some of my you know enders and stuff. Yeah. Because my transition clips are pretty well taken care of, so. And you, is there going to be like a Christmas release for it? Is that what you guys are kind of aiming for? Or? Um, I don't know so much about release date, but. Uh, I would say if there's a September de- deadline, um, you know, maybe Christmas, maybe beginning of next year. Yeah. Roughly. Well, I'm psyched for that. Yeah, so. it'll be good. I know everybody's been putting in a lot of work for it, and um, I don't know. It'll it'll be special for Do sure. Do you know who's going to have full parts? Uh, or has that even been dictated yet? I don't think it's been fully dictated okay. yet. Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's at a put your head down in work mode and we'll see what know, happens after we'll, that we'll see what you, you end up with yeah good I'm, I'm I'm hyped on that dude like honestly I'm actually <laughs> after seeing all this stuff I'm, I'm really psyched especially you know for me like just seeing some like good transition stuff I mean that's what I like lean to towards yeah, nowadays absolutely. so I'm really excited I see some of the spots you guys have been riding and just I mean, I'm down just watching anybody roast, you know, so I'm psyched on it, so. No, it'll be good for sure. And like I said, um, I think just getting the opportunity to work with someone like Mike um, just kind of really brings a different feeling to the table that, uh, I don't know, not many people in BMX are really used to, or yeah. usually used to. Just I mean. He, he, has, he has his own feel and just... Uh, the way that he he makes things look, uh, it just it's a uh, no. He's it, the, he's dope. Yeah, it really it guys. really can differentiate your video from everyone else's. You know. Oh yeah. And I I don't know. We're we're lucky to have him on our team. You know, and have him on our side and be so down to film with us. You know? Yeah. Because it's it's just as awesome of, of, of an opportunity for us you know to work with him yeah no I'm, I'm psyched so I think I'm pretty sure everybody's excited for the video so um, okay so we're gonna go through some questions we got here on Instagram from some people um, somebody's wanting to know do you have any new stuff coming out on Colt yeah um, let's see I'm working on a seat right now and a stem and a set of Works. Um, gonna be working on a tire here pretty soon. You know, honestly, uh, really anything that I had signature over at Odyssey, I'm gonna have signature over at Colt. Yeah. And I'm just gonna. And you guys are gonna push the parts line more? Exactly. So. Yeah. So, um, here in the uh, not so distant future, my bike will be completely cold which it is pretty much right now yeah um just still trying to get everything dialed in any any hints on the tires how they're gonna look or anything um i've actually well i don't know i've been thinking something along the lines of uh i don't know some type of pattern themed tire kind of like ak has going yeah but it'll still be i don't know completely different than what you know the mandala theme that he's got going on yeah his tires like when i saw that thing it it kind of is out of right field you know i was, I was no, like this I mean, thing's crazy uh i mean essentially you know i want to make something as groundbreaking as the hawk tire you know yeah um, with cult and i think that we'll have no problem doing that okay you know? and uh yeah. Hey, I got a quick question for you that's about your parts. Yeah. Because a few kids come in and they'll talk about it when we've had a few of the frames in. Can you tell, you know how you have kind of the older styled uh-huh. frame with your chain stays? Uh, Old can, school wishbone. Yeah. Can you can you talk about like just the background of that? Because I, I, I think there's some kids out there that are always curious about it. I think that just anything that I, I put my aim on, I want it to look a little different than everything else that's out there. Yeah. So whether it be um, shoes, clothing, bike parts, um, I try and just do a couple small little, I don't know, niche little changes that just make them more identifiable with myself. You okay. know? And that wishbone is just, uh, 
it's just more of an old school theme. I mean, if you look at a bike 15, 20 years ago, every every frame would have had a wishbone that looked something similar to that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think it's just uh, trying to peel away a little bit from what every other frame looks like yeah. nowadays, you know? And that's just one small way of doing it that doesn't necessarily change the way it feels, just the way it looks. Okay. Um, uh, Goosebanger wants to know. Goosebanger. Goose, Goosebang. He wants to know, do you remember the first time you met Joe Rich? I do. Um, uh, so this is... <laughs> I don't know what year it was, um, but the first time I met Joe, he had just driven into Austin from Woodward East. Yeah. Um, and he was actually with Nyquist and Mira. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, so they rolled, uh, they might have been with one more person, but I, it might have just been the three of them. So, uh, I mean, I don't know, like I said, I don't know what year this was, but I remember uh, Dave was on, like, a yellow Blamo. Probably, like, 96 then. Yeah, with, that, like, those crazy yeah, that'd be, eight-piece that, parts that'd be about, or whatever. I think that's 96. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, I knew who Dave was. Yeah. He, but I had no fucking clue who Joe was. Yeah. So, like, obviously, they, they show up to 9th Street, and I start fanboying out on, like, him and Ryan. Was Dave like, riding they, 9th Street? Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, like, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, this is, this probably, you're probably right. I mean, it probably was 96. Um, but, yeah, that was a fucking crazy crazy surreal thing i don't know just like meeting meeting mira for your first time oh yeah but yeah it's funny me and joe still talk about it today though because i like i don't know i was all chatting them up but i like didn't even say what's up to him i remember i think i said what's up to him once or twice you just you know? away but i was just more like <laughs> i was just caring i just cared about yeah they yeah dude that's like when mira started just becoming like a real superstar you know like like, yeah, for sure. Like the yeah, and when at that I think time, I had only been around for a few years, so it was like that was like. Um, Yo, yeah. Boom. I'm just like he was out there riding the jumps, dude. But yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, shit, dude. I've known Joe for 20 years now. I don't know. Um, I've known him through through all of it, really. Yeah, yeah I don't know. For through most of my career. Yeah, it's so, dude. It's crazy. He's, um, He's had a long career and he still kills it so damn hard. He's he's an inspiration, man. Um, you know, to be to be at his age and still doing what he's doing and to do what he's done and still and whatnot. I you mean, feel I, the I, passion I get, when he talks about absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a he's a mentor in every sense of the word. You know, um, I'm 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 lucky that. He's he's a close person I have in my life, so yeah, I feel fortunate to have known Joe for as long as I have. We've had some we've had some fucking rad experiences. Some of the some of the coolest trips I've ever been on have been with him, and he's kind of orchestrated, you know, the entire thing. So he's just like I don't know. What are the top three? Uh, shit, probably, well, one of, that scapegoat trip that we went on was oh, awesome. yeah, so, so good. fun. I was so like, jealous like, the whole time you guys were there, and I was at work, I was just like... <laughs> like, I still go back and watch that video sometimes. That video's and fun, it dude. Gets me, it, get, it gets me just as hyped as anything else, man. Like, that's, uh, I really enjoy that video. And then, um, I don't know, that, that Fox trip that we did in Malaga... Um, the Andalusia series, that was, um, uh, that was an unreal trip. Um, and then, I don't know, number three with Joe? Shit. Um, probably Seattle, uh, did that frame promo trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and went up and, like, camped up in Orcas Island and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those were definitely, you know. Very good. Hey, ones. trips in the Northwest. Yeah, I'm Northwest is a yeah solid area. All right, cool. Um, yeah, Seattle BMX dude just wrote 
When are you coming up to Seattle next? Seattle's the shit. I mean, it's one of the... I mean, Washington in general is one of the few places I, I could see myself living. Along with Oregon. Um, but just, you know... I don't know. I could go on and on. Yeah, it's, there's, there's millions of reasons why I would live in both of those yeah, places. Yeah, I think once you usually hit the Northwest, I mean, you just go yeah. up in the mountains and you go, yeah, I can, I yeah, can hang out I here. Can <laughs> like, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, we kind of touched on that while you left BMX racing, you know. Yeah. Um, here, here's one. What was your motivation to put pegs back on and grind kink rails and talk is cheap? Um, well, I mean, I don't really, I was never, well, I mean, definitely leading up to the filming for Talk is Cheap, I was predominantly no pegs. Um, I think I just got used to the feeling of it, you know, riding without them. Just like that really simple, no brakes, no pegs feeling, just go fast, go high, didn't really have to think about much, you know. Um, I don't know. I I think I just, uh, you know, pe- riding with pegs was something that I always did a lot whenever I was riding indoor parks back in the day. And I always like to keep it, you know, somewhat close to my riding style, you know. I, I like to still stay comfortable on them, you know. Yeah. And I think when we were filming for Talk is Cheap, you know, I think I realized that it was going to be kind of a street predominant video just because of the people that were involved with it and the type of trips that we were doing and whatnot. Um, So I kind of, I felt like I had to kind of take it that route, you know, but in all of my video parts, I, I try and you know, not keep it one-sided, you know, because that's not the type of rider that I am. Yeah. You know, I like to ride everything. I like to ride dirt. I like to ride street. I like to ride ramps. But um, I think in Talk is Cheap, uh, it was more, more kind of had to do with the filming trips that we were going on. You know, it was with Dak and AK and, you know, it was with street riders. Yeah. You know, so... I had to get in the schoolyards with them and, you know... You know, Dak, and... Dak is an all-round machine, too. Exactly. All of this... Yeah, everybody is, for sure. Um, but I think that was kind of what pushed me to film more that style of riding yeah. f- for that part. But I think for my Talk is Cheap part, I mean, there was still a little bit of ramp footage in there as well. Yeah. But I think it was kind of predominantly street... And which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that last rail, my, my Ender clip, I mean, I think I went back to that thing like five or six different times. Is that times the kink going with the long flat it, yeah. at the end? Like, I've never worked for something like that, you know, street-wise, yeah. ever, you know? So, I don't know. I'm glad that I got to, you know, accomplish some shit like that. <laughs> All right, I got one from Miles... Shalambi, okay. Okay. Um, who do you ride with the most? Um, well, I I really like to ride in the mornings. Um, I usually wake up pretty early, so I don't mind getting my sessions in at like nine, really. So honestly, a lot of people I know don't really ride with that. You know, nobody really rides that early. Yeah. Um. So. I don't know. I'll just go to house park and kind of just run into whoever really. Um, there's always somebody there. It it kind of it differentiates. Um, I ride with Daryl quite a bit. Daryl Taco lives yeah. really close to me. I ride with him. Um, I go out with Devin quite a bit. Um, it, it's nice going out with either one of them because obviously they both film. So. Um, you know, getting out with somebody that you can get some stuff with kind of whenever you want is always convenient. Yeah. Um, but I ride with Tom. Um, I don't know. I don't really have like a, 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 a real group of people that I go ride with 
daily. It's kind of just people that you run into wherever you are because there's always some. Yeah. There's always people riding places. Yeah, I'm sure sometimes you'll just run into a group of dudes, you totally. know, from somewhere, and you'll session with them for a few days and stuff. So, totally. um, where did this one go? Uh, in time, we rust. Wants to know. Like with music, what's your favorite album maybe to chill with and maybe what's an album that hypes you up to go ride? Um, and that's a good one. Um, it's, it's, I mean, music, music for me really just depends about the mood. Yeah. Um, you know, because sometimes I'll listen to heavy stuff when I'm just chilling, you know, so it's not necessarily about listening to chill music when I'm relaxing or, you know, I don't know. It just depends. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of heavy stuff kind of all the time. Name like the top three bands you're listening to right now. Um, I'm pretty basic, man. I listen to, a, I, I don't get into a whole lot of new stuff. I listen to a lot of the same stuff I've listened to forever and a lot of the same bands and stuff. So, yeah. and a lot of it is, um, you know, I've, I've been searching for music for the Etnies video. Yeah. So almost everything that I I search out or listen to is kind of inspiration for that. So I don't know. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm kind of trying to ride to something heavier for that. So I've been listening to all sorts of stuff. Okay. Um, is it, is it uh, for the selection stuff, for the uh, selection this video yeah how's it how open is it um so this is the first video i've ever filmed for that they're getting rights to so um all the music has to get cleared so i've definitely been trying to find artists that you know aren't huge and still stuff that i would really like and i don't know it's tough i mean it's (laughs) it's it's not only hard to find something that like you fully back for you know a video part song but also that song has to get paid for and get cleared and all of that oh, the you know? is so complicated yeah it's it's fucking gnarly man a lot of, a lot goes into it and this is i'm learning a lot about it so um hopefully i mean i know we'll be able to get get it worked out but i don't know um I'm just going to say this one. Brian Blyther says, you make him smile often <laughs> when you ride, so that's always a good thing. No question from him. But I think we should, anytime we can bring his name up, I think we should. Yeah, Blyther, Blyther's been an inspiration of mine, as I'm sure he's been an inspiration to many others. Yeah, one of the OG yeah. style, style gods, man. Yeah, probably the original, really. I mean, he, he, you, you I, go I back say, and... Yeah, yeah I mean, original, especially like, on the style, yeah. like, on the freestyle Eric, side. Yeah, I'm I'm I'd say, style. like, on the race side, I mean, to me, <laughs> Daryl <laughs> Daryl Young. Yeah, but. I mean, I think he's, he's the first person... I mean, I well, I, I feel weird saying this because he did all this stuff before I was alive, but, like, the first person I've seen pictures of doing... Tables like knees folded and like you know dark just watching, sides. Just watching him in person like, like thirty years ago. Just oh. just just making bike bike riding look simple. Landing so a, smooth at a, at a time when it clearly wasn't, and they were doing doing it on bikes that were fucking nuts. Like it was like you know bike riding was, freestyle was like in its infancy, and people were just learning. Yeah, what yeah. Done and you watch him ride pipeline was, back in the day. Yeah. That bull looks as lumpy as hell, and he's still... Well, even <laughs> fast forward to now, and you can go out and ride certain parks with him in California and he's still to super this smooth. day, and he will make it look just as good. And Yeah. You know, I don't know. that that's, People like that should be an inspiration to everyone that rides a bike, because, I mean, if you really say that you want to do this forever... Those are the type of people that are doing it forever yeah. and have been doing it forever. And He's been through it all. They've done it all. It's, yeah, like straight up, you know? I mean... You got dudes... I mean, dudes are rolling into 50 still like... Wilkerson just yeah. did like 20 feet on the mega ramp and he's for his like 50th birthday. Seriously, like... <laughs> like yeah. DMCs. For just the, thinking of... Yeah. 
Thinking Good about those you. dudes make me feel like a pussy. Like I, you know, I turned thirty in July, and you know, I feel sore and I complain about you know whatnot with my body, but you know, I think about these other dudes that they went hard for so 15, long, and they're fifteen years older than me, and they're fucking pushing it just as hard. Yeah, and it's like fucking sack up, man. Like you, you've got a lot. Of, you got a lot left in you. And how man. long are they going to keep riding for? Yeah. That's Dude. Pretty I mean, I... It's pretty incredible. Yeah. I rode with Ron on his 50th in Portland. And he's... He was not slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's, so... I love that. You know? I mean... Some of those last sessions at the T1 ramp with Joe were so fucking intense. Like... I don't know. Just seeing that, that he can still have that like that drive for it, um, it's inspiring. You know, it's not just him too. You know, BF. You know, a lot of these oh, older yeah. riders, BF. Hoffman. I mean, shit, dude. I'm just yeah, yeah. It's special. And then you DMC. Think- like I, I mean, I could keep going on and on. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Um, how how wants to know? Do you have any good stories? You know, like, pretty much you want to know what, what's your best, like, sketchy story out riding. Like, if you almost got mugged or if you gotten mugged or... Um, I'm, I've never gotten mugged personally. I almost got mugged. Um, the only time that ever happened was in South Africa. Um, we were at a bar and it's pretty, pretty wild story, actually. Um... We were all walking into this bar, and I think I was 19 at the time, and in South Africa, the legal drinking age is 18, so we're in this bar, and um, everybody walks in, you know, we're with like a group of riders and stuff that are from South Africa, and I think Walter was the last person to walk in, and... As he's about to walk in, like, I'm already at the bar, like, ordering drinks and stuff. And as Walter's walking in, he hears, like, a glass break or something. And runs back to the car, sees somebody, like, in our car, basically, like, ripping a backpack out of the car. And the backpack happened to be mine. And um, it had my passport in it. And at that time... uh, we had we had paper return tickets. Oh wow! So like it was like we didn't have electronic tickets, so I'd have my return tickets home, like in this fucking bag. And uh, this dude was basically like just sprinting down this this alleyway, like had already you know had it in his hands. And I was at this while this is happening. I'm at the bar, like I'm at the bar ordering a drink, and. Somehow, he, you know, the people that we were with saw that Walter, like, yelled and ran back. So, like, I turned around and, like, literally nobody's in the bar. Like, no, I, everyone I was with, like, had left. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I go back outside. I go out in the other car. These dudes had, like, caught him. Not, like, not Walter, but these dudes from South Africa had, like, caught him. I guess they had, like, chased after him. The one guy had a beer. Threw the beer at the guy. Like, as they were running, and, like, that's how, yeah. he, that's how he fucking dropped the guy, like, that was carrying my bag. So then they, like, dropped him, and, like, they carried this dude all the way back to the car, and they fucked this dude up so bad. It was I mean, it's, it's wild in South man. Africa, though. It was, yeah, it was brutal. Like, I don't know, one of the gnarlier things that I've ever seen. Yeah, I've... Like, for real. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hit the dude. They did. And apparently, you know, it's something, you know, theft is, theft is huge in South Africa and, you know, they take it really serious, whatnot. So, I mean, they, they tried to say, you know, they're, they're, you know, they had to teach them a lesson or whatever, you know, yeah. and it's like, I guess they did, they fucking did. They definitely fucking did. Yeah. But yeah. needless to say, we got our bag back, my bag back, got my think- passport and shit, but it was fucking crazy. That was a crazy story. That's like the only time that I've ever, I've ever almost had my shit stolen. Now, yeah. never had a bike stolen. Never had. 
I don't know. I'm good about that shit. I keep my eye on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm scrolling through yours right now. Uh, Aaron Ross left you a bunch of questions. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> I'm sure he did. What did he say? <laughs> Well, I'll break them all down to you. Why don't you ride fluorescent brakes? Why don't you ride brakes? Why don't you run plastic pegs? Why do you live in ATX? Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Why, Aaron? You tell me, Aaron. Uh, I don't know. He's got the fluorescent bike market taken care of. He has for years. He's got the brakes. There's no need to dabble with that. I still like brakes. I just don't know how to work on them. And... I would rather, they would frustrate me too much if I still had them on my bike. I actually don't know how to work on my bike at all, so <laughs> that's probably <laughs> why it's so set up so simple and, you know, it's not made for things to go wrong with it, I guess. You want to touch that plastic peg peg, peg issue? I did. I've, 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 I've dabbled with the plastics. Uh, shit, I mean, I bet my whole Talk is Cheap film part was filmed on really? plastic. Really? Uh, a good portion of it, okay. I think. Uh, a lot of it. Um, I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, and I don't even want to say that I'll never go back to them, but I, I definitely prefer the way metal feels um i i got to a point to where i had the plastics on and like everywhere i went it just wasn't working for me yeah it just didn't it didn't feel that good it wasn't sliding the way that i wanted it to slide it does it and i i really think that it's only good for certain situations i like them for like the only times I've enjoyed riding them, and I don't even hate on people for riding them. If, you, if you're into it, it's freestyle. You do what you want. Yeah. Like when I rode a pool, like with severe camel toes in the pool coping, and you're trying to just open up a grind line or something, that worked great for for that. You know where you just know you're unless that thing has like four inches thick of lacquer on the pool coping. It's just camel toe we used in for the pool. Coping. Oh, you don't. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I like I like doing toothpick stalls and ice pick grinds. Yeah. And. You know, a toothpick stall can sometimes fucking kill you with a plastic peg. Yeah. Like, straight up. I mean, you can slide right out on it. Yeah. You know? And ice pick grinds as well. You know, if it's not on, like, the right flat ledge or, you know, what whatever, um, really, ice pick grinds on, on, a, on a quarter pipe with plastic pegs don't really feel that good. So, right now, I've had metals on for a while, and that's probably where they'll stay. Okay. Monroe, has got a bunch of questions, but I think the one we're going to pick out is highest placing at a national when you raced. Damn. Um, I know I never podium. That's pretty weak, huh? <laughs> I've never raced, so it's better than me. I don't think, I mean, not at a national. I never placed top three at a national. All right. Um, I know I was nag six at one point, so that's like I was number six in my age group nationally that's good at one yeah. point but that's more accumulated over not so good finishes at a lot of nationals i don't even know how any of that stuff works i know my buddy brent lee up in washington is the points leader he yeah, holds yeah and I, I i really got to a point i really got to a point to where you know it was uh i was too small and I was just getting fucking. Yeah, yeah that's getting that's smoked, that's, that's real deal with racing. Yeah. Like, there's dudes out there that you see that are 16 that you're like, this is a grown ass man. I will say, here. Donnie Robinson held his own. Yeah, he was always Donnie like, Robinson was always. Is he, is, I I don't. I mean, I know who Donnie Robinson is, but I don't. He I've never always, seen him to see how he big he is. Always the little guy that that could fucking just smoke everyone. I had a buddy. He wasn't. He's actually not much bigger than you. He won the worlds for 15 expert in '94. Down in like Brazil or something, and yeah, he won. He, he won. He's in jail now, but he did win the worlds then. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, he was he was crazy fast, and he never trained or anything. He just was just smoke <laughs> fools. Um, James VDK, I know who. What's James Vandekamp? Yeah, I, I thought that too. It was so. James Vandekamp wants to know what are your top five favorite parks? You don't want to do five. Maybe we just do top three. 
Vancouver, Washington, the old one. <laughs> Keep that <laughs> old Vancouver, Washington out of your mouth. That's nasty. <laughs> um, shit. Okay. Um, man, I really gig harbor. Mm. Gig harbor. Um. That's Gig Harbor in Washington, in case some yeah, people don't sorry, know. Yeah, sorry, Gig Harbor in Washington. Um, what's another really good one? I mean, I know a lot of good ones, but... See, I'm bad with these. I'm like, because I forget the names of a lot of them. You like Vancouver in Washington? I've never even been there. I thought you were there on that. Oh, you showed up late yeah, on that trip. Yeah, I showed up late. Yeah. So I didn't get the experience. And you've never, I've never. You didn't even, get the experience. The best park in the country. Not the old one. Yes, the old one. Did you guys hit it on that trip too? Which one? The scapegoat trip. Yeah. Oh man. So Bob bad. made you go there. Yeah. Rough. I mean, he knew I'd like it. Rough. Right. <laughs> Shit. Is it going? Yeah, I mean, I can cut this out. It's, I can literally just snip this piece out while you're thinking. I might, I might just have to skip it. I don't think I can pick three parks. Can I? I guess well, I mean, you, it, it, would T1 be one of them? I mean, that's kind of a park. Yeah, I, I consider it. That's, or you just say yeah, it. or a spot. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be a public yeah. skate park. Transition spot. Hold on. God damn it. Why is this going to be the, <laughs> this has got to be the tough one, huh? This seems like the easiest one. I could rattle it off so quick. Um, okay, then we'll say T1. Okay, so... So... So Gig Harbor, Washington? Gig Harbor, T1. Um... You can just have a top two. That sounds weird. <laughs> the third. You got one there. I mean, I, I, want, I keep wanting to say FDR. Say it then. If, if it is, it is. FDR is dope. Right, it's my, probably my favorite. Yes. Yeah, it's FDR. All right. All yeah. right, that works. Kick Harbor, T1, FDR. You never, have you ridden Burnside? No. That's so weird to me. I know. And every time Joe comes to town, he never rides. I'm like... I know. Be, yeah. You would love the place. I know. God. Uh, here's a bike-specific question this kid wants to know. He has a bunch, but we'll just answer one of them. Why do you ride so why do you ride a front load stem? Um I think that's just one of those pieces of the bike that I I don't know, I don't think I can ever switch it up. I don't know. It's I feel like I've developed a a, a style the way that my bike feels for me and I don't think I can ever go outside of it. And by putting a top load stem on, it it would do that. It would change oh, it drastically. I feel, I feel you on that. You know, Front so road. I don't. I don't know. I'm surprised that I even have the size bar on there that I do. I never thought that I would go over something that would be like eight point. What size bar do you run right now? It's only at eight point eight. Yeah. But I would like. I I still vouch that I I won't go over nine. So like, I'm. I, still, I got a front load and an eight point nine. I won't do it. Like I just won't do. I don't know. I I I mean. Yeah. Some people. Top some load and some top people load. like it. It's just not for me. I won't do it ever. So uh, keeping the front load stem uh, keeps me within that comfort realm. Yeah. Um. The sea in the sky. We'll see if you can't answer this one. I'll just cut it out. But it's kind of. What's your favorite writer from eighties, nineties, two thousands, or now? Or if you just want to say like nineties, two thousand, eighties, um, I'm definitely gonna have to say Blyther. Yep. Um, nineties. Um, you know, I had a lot of different influences in the nineties. You know, uh. I mean, the very first video I ever owned was Mad Matt. Oh, yeah. You know, so Matt Hoffman was one of my first introductions into BMX. Yeah. You know, as, as he was for so, so many, you know. And then, you know, to from people like him to people like Joe and Robbie and stuff that were spending, you know, time in Austin in, like, the later 90s and stuff, you know. So it was like... 
I I got inspiration from a lot of different people in the 90s. 2000s, it was a little bit more focused. Um, it was, you know, if I had to really pick a person, it would be Mikey. You know, it was just, yeah. you know, it's just Mikey, that was, you know, his era. And, yeah. I mean, like... Yeah, it's, I, easily, I, it's a, he, he defined the 2000s. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, you know, and I think he pushed... He pushed the way BMX was going in, in the way that I wanted it to go, you know, and that was, you know, what I tried to follow. Yeah. You know, and then to now, um, you know, I really get, um, you know, a lot of inspiration off of people like Dennis and, you know, really Dennis. Anderson is... is he, he's a huge motivator for me. I don't know. Watching him ride, yeah. everything. It just, just everything about him. Like he just gets me really fucking stoked. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, good, I know he gets everyone yeah, fucking stoked, but that's a, that's a good one. You know, if I had to pick somebody, to, you know, nowadays that really kind of inspires me and pushes me, uh, it's definitely probably Dennis. Perfect. All right, we'll do like. Four more. I mean, there's like a zillion of these things. Cool. So, um, my buddy Vince Croft, uh, he just wants to know what are your motivations? Like, what what keeps you wanting to go with riding? Um. Well, I mean, I I would. I mean, I want to be a part of you know this group of people that's forty five fifty that you know is that's still doing it yeah you know, still riding still having fun still pushing it you know i, I want to be a part of that so i think that has a lot to do with it you know and i'd be doing it either way really you know whether you know i was doing it for a living or not yeah you know, i would i would have that i would have that same mentality um i mean I think there's a lot of things that keep me going, you know? I don't know. I feel like now uh, it's a good time to, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't really say that. I mean, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, perfect. Um, gosh, I mean, um... Try and find like two more good ones, and then some people are gonna be mad because I didn't ask theirs, but it's okay. Uh, well, we can do this Trey Jones one. What? He wants to know why you hate Russ Barone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate Russ, um, but Russ is, he's just, uh, he's, he gets the, <laughs> I don't know, how do, how do I say it? He's just the one that gets fucked with on trips. I don't know. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Uh, I mean, so, there's always that guy on a trip. I've been and, it. And it's, Everybody's been and it. it. And it's, it's usually rust. That's all I kind of say, really. <laughs> all right. Um, this was a good one. Owen Clegg. Uh, he, sa he says, what Austin local that doesn't ride anymore uh, do you wish would, would ride again or still rode? Man. That's a good one. Let's see. Taj? That's a good one. That's a real good one. Taj was an Austin local. Taj was a huge, huge part of the Austin scene growing up. You know, I definitely... I mean, I I remember Taj before he had dreadlocks. To Taj is like one. That's of my... that's a long time ago. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. That's that's like I think that's perfect, dude. Like. Yeah. Yeah, Taj for sure. Taj is like in my top three, so he's he's awesome. Um, well, yeah, I think we got through all the questions. Do uh, you want to thank anybody on here or anything? No, uh, thank you. Thank Dig. Um, thanks Snakebite. I mean, this is the first podcast I've ever done, so this has been a cool experience. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for 
dude, thank you for sitting down with me. I'm yeah. I'm just super psyched. So I'm just no, it's it's fun. It's fun to talk about all this for sure. Yeah, bring stuff up that you like forget There's about. There's been a lot of this stuff that I've either forgotten about or just like I don't know, just rekindled a lot of stuff and just, I don't know stuff I haven't thought about in a long time. So it's been cool for sure. Well, super psyched. Yeah. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.